Hey guys, what's up? It's BJ the Brave here, and this time I am back with a little bit of anti Tau uh, talk. Let's go through how to fight against the Tau. I've done a lot on my channel in the last month around deck guides and really thinking deep about the kind of mechanics of the Tau and the different ways you can play them. And I'm kind of conscious that all the rest of you poor gamers who aren't collecting Tau are probably sitting there thinking, well, what about us? You know, what about the, the collections we've been um, building for the last three months? Like, what are we supposed to do against this new faction? So I didn't want to leave you guys hanging dry, obviously. And it was really fun, actually, doing this video, just sort of thinking through, like, uh, some of it theory crafting, um, some of it just based on kind of sound knowledge of the game. But one thing is for sure... The Tau will require you to adapt. Now, I don't believe Tau are busted. I'm not in that camp. I think there might be a one or two cards that need a little bit of a tweak. But they, I, I don't think they're busted. I think they're strong. I think they're like four out of five on the kind of strengthometer. Um, they're very strong. They're very competitive. Possibly have some tier one decks. But they're not so busted that they make everything uh, else irrelevant. In fact, most factions can fight pretty well against them as long as you do actually adapt your decks. But as I say, for sure, you will need to make some changes and you will need to consider them if Tau become meta. And now we're three weeks in, people are starting to build their collections, they're starting to get more cards. You're going to start to see more competitive Tau decks and therefore that means you'll be coming up against them more on the ladder. So let's dive in. So first thing to consider is... Um, some of the kind of core mechanics of the Tau itself. Obviously, we need to think about things like the Marker Light uh, ability, which says when this unit receives a ranged attack, it receives X amount of damage and loses Marker Light at the end of the turn. So you need to, when you're playing against them, you need to really obviously have Marker Light in mind and be thinking about the fact that, you know, uh, you, you might have a pretty juicy looking unit on the board, but actually, do they have a way of kind of uh, not just trading with units, but actually getting cheating the damage and doing extra harm through the marker light bonus. So that's obviously a big one. The other one to be uh, kind of mindful of as well, obviously, if you are um, sort of new to playing against the Tau, is the long range ability. When doing a ranged attack, enemies don't retaliate. So you've got to make sure you don't get caught out with this. Um, I do see some players not attacking long range units when they absolutely should. If you leave long range on a unit when you could have got rid of it, you're basically giving them a free trade. And that's a massive tempo loss for you. A huge tempo loss. So you imagine, uh, you know, you've got a four drop down. And obviously this guy's got lot the, uh, the sniper drone with long range. He can do four damage to you and basically kill your unit. That's, that's basically meant you, you pretty much didn't play anything that turn. So... Uh, you know, you really got to consider uh, the long range um, ability. The other thing to think about, I think, with with uh, with with Tau, just in terms of some of the mechanics, is obviously they do have access to quite a bit of stealth, and we all know what stealth is. We know that from the Tyranids, we know that from other factions. So stealth is also a, a thing to factor. You might be looking at a unit on the board and thinking, oh, you know, maybe I'll get it next turn, but then remember they could uh, put put that thing into stealth, or they could block it with Vanguard. They've got a lot of Vanguards. So, um, so that's the kind of some of the kind of core mechanics. So let's just talk about uh, a few a few generic things when you're playing against Town. Uh, so um, the first thing is that they you know they they tend to have high ranged attack units, right? So some units, for example, that have worked very well in your in your decks. I think about cards like the. Um, What's the th three mana? The Tomb Blade in, in the Necrons, the three energy flanker, you know, which has miserable melee attack but high high flank attack. Those cards are suddenly not quite as good against Tau, right? Because if you're going to use that flank attack to trade, that range attack to trade with Tau, you're going to get taken out yourself, right? So it's this weird thing of like, well, do you go melee attack then? Yes, except for the fact that melee attack can't harm flyers so you've really got to think about like how are you going to trade against tau like how are you going to take their flyers out uh if you've got flyers with high melee attack for example things like the veteran storm boy i, I really do think that they are uh like s tier cards against against um against the tau so high you know melee attack flyers are, 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 are something to behold um other things you've got to think about though are um the fact that we've got uh, drones introduced to the game. And, you know, the thing with the drones, the, the real thing that you're thinking about there is the fact that, again, flying and three health. So it's really difficult for a lot of warlords to just take out without, you know, 
putting some resources or at least their warlord talent into it so you've got to think about how do you deal with that and on top of that uh, tau generally tend to go quite wide so um i don't think we've had many powerful go wide uh factions recently so it's something that's new in the meta it's something that's different you've got to think about how are you going to deal with board states where the opponent is is building a really wide board so again when you're deck building when you're thinking about your your current decks how are you going to adapt to that and we'll kind of look at an exact a couple of examples of that as we go uh, now a couple of kind of like achilles heels to be aware aware of uh, the Tau don't really have much access to heal in terms of healing their Warlords. So, uh, particularly Commando Amasos and Shadow Sun, they can't really heal themselves. So again, that suggests that, uh, you know, getting on the front foot, being able to kind of beat Tau down a little bit, um, actually there's no way for them to kind of come back from a health perspective. Um, and in, in addition to that, they do struggle, uh, they have very little flank. Unless they're playing, if you've seen my battle suits um, guides, my own VAR battle suits guides, a really good one, go and check that out. Um, that does have more access, more than usual access to flank. It's kind of designed in a way to kind of uh, maximize the ability of getting flank. But outside of the Vespids, most of the genetic tower builds don't have too much access to flank. If you've seen your opponent play the dynamic offensive, or the Dio, as I call it, then you've got to be thinking, oh, they might now have picked up a flank if, if, they, pick, if they drew into a suit. Uh, but outside of that, they have very little. So what that means is that Tau struggle to come back from behind. If you get on board first, then Tau uh, actually really can struggle to get on, uh, get back into the game. They've, they've got a couple of ways, but they haven't got many ways of coming back into the game. Uh, and, and, and the other thing is that you have a warlord trait no not a warlord trait a an offense card sorry which is the solar eclipse now even if you're not planning on collecting tau i think it's worth putting a few of your uh, mission points in just to get the beginner deck because you get some free cards so why not um and just playing some like play through the practice games uh, the practice modes it'll help you understand the tau mechanics anyway and get used to it which is going to help you when you're playing against them but uh, the main thing is that if you only you only have to get to i think it's like rank five not far uh, on the forge and you'll open solo eclipse and this this is like a super powerful offense card now honestly i'm hoping this gets changed i don't think this is actually particularly good for the game i think any offense card that essentially shuts down an opponent's a, a, a kind of faction ability we don't really have that in the game and i think this is really bad for the game what, and what i'm talking about is is marker like this this really does hurt tau's marker like builds so particularly like the shadow sun builds now there is still ways that tau can put marker light on you for example if it's coming uh, from a uh, as a rally from a troop um like the pathfinder they, they can still do all that but if they're trying to actually play it as a stratagem uh, they, they wouldn't be able to do that with so 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 this is you know if you really want to stick it to town then definitely go and get yourself the solar eclipse all right so moving on let's talk about the actual individual factions i'm going to start with the tyranids today oh why am i still on there so a couple of things with the two couple of what i'm going to do is just go through basically some of the cards and some of the things i think you think about now the nids really do struggle with town i think the nids are one of the armies that struggle the most um Turvigon is probably uh, currently at the, state at the time of writing this video, writing this video, making this video. Turvigon's the most powerful nid deck, uh, but the big, um, the rest of the sort of big hitters are really struggling. So what I would suggest is that uh, a stealth is is your best friend as a as a tyranny player. I think you've got to lean more heavily into stealth than you ever did, because obviously when you play your stealth units, your opponent can't attack them. So uh, you know the encircle the prey is as good as it's ever been. Um, but I think you need to really think about all of your stealth units, uh, death leapers, all that sort of stuff, because the tower have no way of mark lighting what can't be seen. Well, actually, they have one way, the carry on tactics, but they can they, they only have you know a couple of those. But apart, aside of that, they, the, the stealth is your best defense as a, as a tyranny player. And I think any sort of swarm lord build in particular, you really want to be going down that swarm, that, that kind of like assassin build. Um, so, yeah, definitely go and check out my um, assassin tyranny guide. Uh, I've got um, on, on, on my videos because I think I think something along those lines it doesn't have to be much different so that would do pretty well uh, outside of that in terms of the warlords I actually think Neurothrope and Terra have a chance to shine Terra is literally I think a little bit overpowered in terms of his alpha warrior ability uh, he's a little bit underpowered when it comes to the synergy with the rest of the Tyranny cards right now 
But honestly, like, the value you get from the Terror is insane. It's really quite easy to get six attack with the Terror um, that is flying. Remember what I said at the beginning, that flying things with melee damage is a premium? Well, every time you use your Warlord talent with Terror, you become a flyer and you get buffed melee damage, which means you can smack enemy flyers using your melee damage, usually not taking any or very little damage in return. So Terror is, like, you know, low-key pretty good right now, certainly if you're coming up against a lot of Tau. And the probably safer option and more tri tried and tested is the Neurothrope. The Neurothrope is very good right now because uh, essentially it has balanced stats uh, with the 2-2 two -two, and for an extra 1 energy you can use the Spirit Leech to just clear out those drones. So drones are not really a problem for Neurothrope um, and unlike say Imatech who has to spend 2 energy to get that extra ping, Neurothrope only has to spend 1 energy and also the Neurothrope has flexibility in that if he doesn't need it he can use that 1 to obviously heal and do all the usual goodness of uh, healing a Synapse creature which then puts it on the things that are next to it, blah, blah, blah. So new, I think Neurothrope is... If I was playing Tyranids, and I'm not, because I'm not a huge Tyranid fan anyway, but um, honestly, I would be taking... If I was trying to climb ladder right now, in a, and it, let's say it gets quite heavy on Tau this season, I would probably be running Neurothrope and testing a few Terra decks, but that's just me. All right, what else? Uh, so we talked about uh, the Encircle the Prey, two of in pretty much every deck. I also think Bounding Leap is pretty good right now. Bounding Leap, obviously, being the two blast, again, benefiting from Synapse, so you can put this on multiple units, means that you can clear out wide boards. You can deal with those kind of uh, pesky drones, for example, quite easily, even, even shields and stuff. So getting blast on a Synapse creature, uh, it probably also makes things like Neuroloid pretty good this season now, finally, where, you know, you can just drop this down for no cost and then get that kind of uh, wider spread um, stratagem, that blast. So I think that's a great uh, approach. I also think a card that we haven't seen is now Time to Shine, which is Toxic Miasma. Toxic Miasma is only three energy and it says blind two random enemies. And I think that um, this is actually pretty good. I mean, obviously against Shadow Sun, this is extra great in terms of if it's a Warlord, uh, because Shadow Sun can obviously give himself three range attack herself even. Uh, but I think Toxic Miasma is just really good because pretty much every unit in the Tau faction, bar a very few, like the Honored Ethereal and things, are, are pretty much based around range damage. And Blind really hurts Tau. I'm not seeing enough people using it. I mean, I've had it used against me a little bit, sometimes fully enough by the AI. And Blind is just, it's like, what am I supposed to do? I've got a board full of units and none of them can attack because their melee attack sucks. So uh, definitely try Toxic Miasma. I really think that's a pretty good tech right now. Uh, for the Tyranids. Uh, next up, I've got the uh, Venom Throat. Venom Throat's pretty good because Venom Throat's obviously always been good, especially coming on with Flank. It can deal with pretty much anything in the Tau un in the Tau faction, right? It can obviously hit the big things. It doesn't need uh, high damage because of the uh, insta-kill ability, um, but it also means that, uh, and people often think about that, but what they might not think about is just using this to kill drones, right? Like, it's another drone remover uh, where you won't take much damage back, so I think Venom Throat um, has gone from being already great to still great. <laughs> and particularly one against Tau, I'd be running two of them with the flank in, in there as well. Uh, and, the, and obviously the double stealth, another good target for that. What else? A um, couple of others, I just think uh, these are probably obvious, but uh, things like, uh, again, I'm not going to go over all the all the stealth units, because as I said at the start, I think the stealth units are kind of like a, a, a a good a good way to go at the minute um, but i do think that uh, things like the hive crone are just superb right obviously coming on being a flyer so again that premium of being a flyer with high melee damage is superb but also then dealing the three damage so killing a drone on entry uh, this is like two of every time against tower i think the hive crone's a real problem uh for the tower and then when they want to attack back they obviously have to often have to use range attack um, and you know you've the the crone still got four range attacks. We'll deal with most units pretty pretty nicely, um, and even the screamer killer as well. You know again screamer killer um, uh, getting that kind of blast uh, and benefiting uh, from um, uh, flank. Similar with the norm emissary. If you were running newer throw, I'd probably say now might be a good time to run the norm emissary in there. So that's what I'd be doing with Tyranids. Like I say, I don't think they're in a great spot uh, against Tower. I think they're one of the factions that suffer a lot. 
but uh, there are some tips to try and keep it competitive. All right, let's move on to the Chaos. And the Chaos are also struggling a little bit against Town, not going to lie. Spoke to Buggy about this, who's probably the best Chaos player at the minute. And, um, you know, he was saying it's a nightmare. Uh, and he finds it pretty tough. But it is winnable, depending on, uh, obviously, what they draw. But again, you want to be thinking about your AoE, like your Traitor's Hate, for going wide. And you want to be thinking about, obviously, the 6-drop as well, that does... Uh, up to six damage on, on the flanks that's very good against tau um, but a couple of things to think about uh, the veteran legionary is quite good as an early drop it's got really high range high health uh, so it can stand up quite well to some of the um some of the range units that might might come down uh, like a crisis suit for example which is probably the highest statted three cost that tau's got this can kind of trade nicely with it so definitely think that this is a pretty good card right now i also think things like skins of fate is really good again it's stealth we've already talked about how stealth is a pretty good counter to to tau making sure that you can get the jump on them so things like skins of fate keeping up the card draw but importantly giving access to stealth on units i think is going to be uh, pretty important uh, on, top, on top of that uh, and for the si similar reason obviously we do have the uh, warp talon now the warp talon is again hitting that premium that i talked about earlier being a flyer with access to high melee attack so the fact that he's zero obviously means he's going to get traded back with horribly but the stealth means he's going to get the jump he's going to get to dictate what happens first so he should be able to get great value hitting with a six cost in the air that's uh, uh, superb. And then playing that and then maybe the skins the next turn as well onto him. Giving him another unit round of stealth could be a game winner. So Warp Talon's a um, good card anyway, but I think it's in a really good place. Um, and then one that's a little bit outside. I've not tested this, guys, but I wonder about Master Possession. He's pretty expensive. He's not great, but he does have, uh, you know, the six health for five energy, which is pretty good. Um, he's got pretty decent stats. And he also has this next turn where he can deal two to four damage. And if... If you manage to kill a drone off, for example, with that, then you can deploy a Possessed Marine. That could be a big tempo swing, but I just don't know whether the card itself is worth it. It's not usually played in Chaos decks, but it might just be one to think about and test against Tau particularly a little bit. Um, but I, I wouldn't put too much into that. It was more just a bit of a theory, uh, to be honest. But something that is certainly more solid, and you'll see in all the Chaos decks, is the Bringer of Decay. This card becomes even more important because it turns all of your two damage, like your Traitor's Hate, like your uh, Warlord attacking, for example, it turns it into three. So this is a great way of being able to deal with those three health units, is the Bringer of Decay, and uh, probably something that you want to be trying to combo uh, effectively with against the Tau. The other one that's pretty good, uh, we already mentioned the Helldrake Strike obviously being very good, but another one that's pretty good actually right now against Tau is the Black Crusade. Funnily enough that the Tau... Um, they struggle a little bit to deal with they don't have a board clear right so anything that can deploy multiple high uh you know high sort of uh, health units uh outside a long strike like long strike could help deal with two but the black crusade can be a real problem um you i did actually lose a game with town to chaos where i felt like i was winning the game uh, it, was, it was pretty back and forth, but I felt in control, you know, and then he dropped the Black Crusade, and I just, I just had no way of dealing with this board. So, uh, Black Crusade's actually pretty good. Like, against the Orcs, this can be terrible, because obviously they can just will a gork it, but against Tau, if Tau becomes the meta, the Black Crusade is actually very, very, very strong. All right, let's talk about... What should we go on to next? Let's go on to Ultramarines. Okay, so the Ultramarines. Okay. So, in terms of the Warlords, I actually think that your best bet is Uriel still. Now, the reason for that is actually his ability. Uh, I'm a bit annoyed about Uriel. The devs took away his ability to have an extra card, and I think that's really hurt Uriel. I don't generally think his aggro deck is uh, anywhere near as good as it was, uh, both in terms of consistency and also just the meta changing um, and things like the uh, Orcs getting access to better armor and heal and things like that. But uh, the Master of the Fleet, what it does do is it does mean that you have a way of dealing with three health units. And that's really important, as we've already said against town. Uh, not just one, but multiple uh, units. So if your opponent's go going wide with drones, you can get, just play this once and put all of them down to two. Your Lord can trade in one of them. You know, um, maybe your Primus trades another, or next turn you can do them. So I think this is really good. And obviously combining that with the Storm Raven, it's an old trusty combo. 
which uh, deals two damage to all enemies. That would obviously be dealing three damage to three of your enemies of your choice. So really nice way of kind of clearing up those uh, those drones and pretty crucial right now. So I still think Uriel's good. I'd say outside of that, Tigarius is okay because obviously he does have access to Smite. And Smite is another way of just sort of finishing off those units. Although I would say it's a little bit expensive. You know, that's going to cost you three energy every time to do. So I would say you'd be falling behind on tempo if you're doing that too often. I don't think it's a, an amazing strategy, but it is a good emergency, you know, in case of emergency you've got it. But I would definitely think Uriel's the best placed of the leaders. Now, Octavia Infiltrator should come back in. I really think that, uh, <clears throat> again, combined with Uriel, where... Uriel can damage the enemies with his hero power pretty easily, and so you can then get this blind off perhaps more easily than you can with Kalgar or with uh, Tigeria. So I definitely think blind is a premium right now against the Tau and super, super powerful. Uh, the other thing is that the those who played the game back in November will remember that this used to be random. So the fact that it's now Rally, you being able to choose which damaged enemy is actually really powerful against Tau. And I think this card is superb against Tau. Uh, slightly um, understated but powerful is the first one. you know just that ping I know it sounds weird but that one ping coming down again just turns those three health units into two health units which means they can be cleared so again just a nice cheap uh, and effective uh, card I also think that right now we should be thinking on the four drop about uh, coming back to Sergeant Electius with uh, kind of uh, see this rotation that happens between like things like Honor Guard or Primaris Chaplain it was very popular last season. I think Papa, the Papa Beard guide masterclass that I did uh, with him, uh, we talked about the Chaplain tech. But I think right now the Electius tech is much better for a Tau meta. Again, Blind is just such a premium. And if you make Tau uh, have to try and trade him with this guy with melee damage, they're going to really struggle and they're going to die. Uh, you know, the range, um, bl Blind in the. Um, uh, range damage is, is super powerful against Tau. Now, one again, this is a little bit of a theory, but I think T Sergeant Telion might be pretty good against Tau. I don't know this for sure. I need to tr I'd need to try it. But camouflage means that uh, he can't obviously be targeted by things like the marker lights or even just the removals, like the pulse, not pulse carbines, what are they called? Uh, the two energy spells that deal three damage, those ones, you can't, it can't be targeted. So the camouflage in itself is really, really good. But the other thing is that uh, this might be a really good codex ability. Again, similar problem with Tellian that he always has that I don't know that about playing him on turn five is best, but maybe playing him on like say turn seven with something could actually be pretty good, right? Like giving Sniper, not just um, to himself, but obviously to the units, um, I think Ashley could be really quite good against Tau. You're almost turning the long range on the Tau by doing that. So I don't know what the exact build would look like there. Maybe let me know in the comments if someone's used Telion a bit more and got some ideas um, about what kind of build he fits in. But I'd be tempted to try and stick him in this Uriel deck if I was looking to build something that's a bit more anti-Tau. And last but not least, uh, well, actually, I was going to say ob obvious things are like Inceptor Sergeants and the hard removal inspired retribution just in a pinch there's a few shielded units in the town this can really help with that but the last one i was going to mention is just an honorable shout out to the redemptor dreadnought if you're going down the codex route it might well be worth thinking about a, a redemptor dreadnought with the zero cost um tactical insight uh to to kind of get the double aoe that should really help to deal with an a, a, a sort of later game tau board that goes wide so I think the Dreadnought could be a worthy addition as well. But as I say, I think Ultramarine's not in a brilliant place right now um, and will struggle, but there are some things that you could definitely help you to fight the Tau with. All right, let's move on to the Orcs. Now, the Orcs, are, well, they're Orcs, aren't they? So my favorite faction, they're very powerful still, and um, they have lots of tools. You won't be uh, too surprised to know. I do think that... Um, Gordrang is suffering because he's swinging this big axe with his threatening his big kind of you know melee damage and Tau just don't care about melee damage you, you need range damage so Gordrang is very out of meta right now Grook similarly uh, you know obviously I love Grook everyone knows that this is one of I think in a vacuum he has possibly the best warlord talent 
it's one of the for the long term it's one of my favorite warlords but it's not necessarily in fashion right now um and again no real way to sort of deal with um the threats that tau pose from his warlord talent himself now gasgul and boss boss zagstruck are a different story zagstruck is actually excellent if you really want to go all in on anti-tau zagstruck is actually the warlord to just deal with tau especially drones so go and see my zagstruck control guide that i've done uh, not too long ago in the videos. It's a very powerful deck and it just got better really with Tau. You might even want to change a few cards. Maybe some of the cards I'm going to talk about in a minute. But as a Warlord, Zagstruck is superb. Why? Well, again, he turns when he uses Worst Temper, when he uses his talent, he basically turns into a Flyer who has high melee attack. He gets plus one, so he goes up to three melee attack. And what did we say at the start of this video? Flying with melee attack is a premium against Tau, and you've now got a Warlord that has that premium. So, Boss Zagstruck is very, very good. Uh, in terms of tempo, you are trading two energy to get that for the two energy that a drone costs. Um, you do start to fall behind if that's your only strategy later game, when the Tau might be cheating out drones for cheaper, obviously. But certainly in the early game, um, Zagstruck stands up very well to the Tau. Uh, so Zagstruck's in a great place. Gazgul's not bad as well because uh, the thing with Gazgul is obviously he is able to not just pump out Grots every turn who essentially, you know, if, if they if they survive, they essentially enable uh, an extra ping, right, to be able to deal with um, those higher health units. But in addition to that, you know, Gazgul's just able to make units, including his own flankers, more powerful. And so that extra reach, again, just helps him to deal with those kind of... Um, uh, you know, higher health or flyers and things like that. So Gaskell's also like a soft counter to Tau, and he just has access to a very good deck and good synergy uh, otherwise. So Orcs, I would say one of those two for the Warlords. Um, <clears throat> now, in terms of units, you've got things like the Bomb Squig, which are very good, and are not just on their own, but obviously coming out of the Squig Buggy, which is the six drop. These are just super good because, uh, you know, obviously being able to deal two to three damage every single time is really countering the Tau in that the Tau Warlord gets hurt by that. And we already said the Warlord can't heal. And it's obviously helping to clear out those go wide strategies as well. So Bomb Squig's in a very, very good position right now. Might well be worth running one or two. And when you start thinking about things like Crump the Gits, it gets better because playing Crump the Gits allows you to like play things like this and actually flank with them as well. So um, Crump the Gits is... Uh, is is um pretty key card at the minute in in the gas school and uh putis who, who actually finished rank one uh, at the end of the season he he shared his deck with me and uh he, he's also run, been running two of these as well so uh crump de Gitz is in a really good spot uh also a couple of other things you can tech in you can think a little bit about things like the grot tank grot tanks in a pretty good position good stats coming in with the armor as well nice bit of range damage there to kind of keep up with the tau units and you know the vespid are one of the really good three drops and actually the, this the vespid struggles with this a little bit so the grot tanks in a pretty good if you're looking to fight for early tempo which you should i think the grot tank is not a bad tech right now um, also in terms of uh, pirate pyromaniacs is also really great if you've got this legendary again giving blast to units another way of clearing out the go wide uh what else do i think is in a pretty good state i think shooter boy is very good you know double whammy against the against the tau right it's the high range attack okay so it trades really nicely into anything that tau have got uh in terms of uh, three energy or lower and also obviously that mob going off that one damage that can ping into hitting you know like a a drone for example which combined with gasgul means that it dies so shooter boy is also in a really really nice uh place right now um uh what else would i say is pretty good so I think things like, uh, these are cards that you'll be playing anyway, but Scorch Assault, I think it's very, very good. You know, getting that two to four damage on three units, just superb again at dealing with the drones and uh, sort of damage tau early early game Tau units. So I definitely think Scorch is good. Goes without saying, doesn't it, that uh, the Will of Gork is good, right? Uh, dealing with a wide board, there's nothing better than Will of Gork because it just clears the board. Uh, but a couple of things that maybe... Um, are worth pointing out the vet storm boy again having that premium of uh flank and um high melee and flying this guy is really superb you can actually attack the enemy tau broadside who, who let's say the tau players on five 
if you're going first as the orc player, he plays his broadside on five, you then play this on six, and you actually just clear that thing out and still have three health left. So um, that's a really nasty counter to one of the better five drops that the Tau play. Veteran Storm Boy, as ever, superb. What was the other one I was going to talk about with the orcs? Oh yeah, now a new one. Uh, the Storm Boy Strike. Now again, if we're going to be playing things like Crump the Gits, this card can be ridiculous because, first of all, it's pretty good now because, again, as we've already said, Tau are now playing this go wide strategy a lot. Not not every archetype, but a lot. quite often they do. And when they go wide, you can really punish that with Storm Boy Strike because Storm Boy Strike is going to play out a load of flyers. And again, these guys are flying with high melee, so they're a real threat. Now, if you combine Crump the Gits with this spell, though, it's insane. That is like one of the best counters to a Tau wide board. Obviously, it's, you can't do it until energy 8. Uh, that's the downside, but it's a super, super powerful kind of swing turn for you. So another really good thing to think about. So lots of uh, lots of good options for Orcs. The flankers are still good. The hard removal is still good. Um, things like uh, uh, the 10 drop still good, right? Like the Rock Invasion, we might get the Orc Knob and then be able to clear up a wide board or we can play Crump the Gits with this on 12. And, um, and do it anyway. So yeah, Orcs are in a pretty good position and counter Tau pretty, pretty effectively, if I'm honest. Okay, let's talk about the Eldar. Now, I actually think that the one of the big things that uh, Eldar players might want to think about is actually switching from Galen to Eliak. Galen struggles. It's, it, it's funny saying this. Like um, Galen's still good, don't get me wrong. Very, very good. Probably the best Warlord overall. But I'm talking about countering Tau. Now, Galen... Um, struggles a little bit with Tau because Tau can play a drone. For example, imagine I play a drone first turn. Galen now plays uh, Storm Guardian. Now my Warlord kills the Guardian and then the one range attack from the stealth drone takes off the stone. And I could, it doesn't have to be a stealth drone, it could be any drone, right? So any drone can do that. So the Guardians actually really struggle that you know the the, the galen thing uh, really sort of doesn't work very well against tau however zephyr blade does why is that because zephyr blade obviously can just give himself that uh that extra shuriken and that will deal with the three health units i still think this guy should be flying but the cool thing is it's not just that it can actually give his units that too so when you start you know, giving your Wind Rider Shuriken 3, for example, or your Striking Scorpion Shuriken 3, and it can really start to mount up in terms of being able to just kill those um, pesky Tau units without really taking any damage back. So Zephyr Blade's actually pretty strong against Tau. I've got to say, probably the best Warlord against Tau. Uh, definitely check that out and definitely have a go and give that a go if you're struggling with Tau. Uh, next, I want to talk about Fire and Fade. Now, this is a bit of a theory crafted one from myself. I haven't tested this, but I did build a deck with it in. The reason why I think Fire and Fade could be good is, first of all, it's only one energy. One energy tactics, uh, when they're effective, um, are pretty good because they don't cost you a lot of tempo to do. Where I think this could be good is uh, really synergizing with some of the cards that I think are absolutely essential against Tau, and that is the Wind Rider coming on, uh, being able to deal with... This thing deals with drones. It deals with a lot of units, to be honest. And similar with Shroud Runner, right? Like, the Shroud Runner comes on against the uh what's the three drop drone for tau um the sniper drone this kills the sniper drone sniper drone has three energy sorry three health so this comes on it flanks it snipers and it kills instantly but then it's a sitting duck just sits there and the warlord can take it out and so i'm actually thinking that for one energy it's probably worth bringing that back normally bringing things back isn't great in warp forge because you kind of like losing the tempo of the body being there to trade but when we're talking about these two units in particular, the Wind Rider and the Shroud Runner. So much of their value, so much of of what they're doing uh, the, in terms of their tempo and their effectiveness is happening on the flanking attack. It's it's not so much the body that's left behind. So I think for one energy, and because they're cheap anyway, they're only two and three energy, pulling them back and hitting again, I actually think could lead to a new, a little bit of a new archetype for the Eldar. And particularly if you uh, then play the three drop 
the wild host because that can also pull you more town vehicles so you might get additional shroud runners and wind raiders as well from that so uh, i actually think that if you ran that and maybe even the the defense stratagem that gives you another uh, another opportunity to pick a, an Eldar unit so you could get another one. There could be a real kind of like hit and fade kind of build building up around that. Um, I also think suiting that, uh, that 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 kind of theme would be the Warp Spider. I think the Warp Spider is pretty good also against town. The main reason is, is that it's very easy for the Warp Spider to trade with a unit and not die against Tau. And um, that means that uh, you keep up in terms of hand and you, it helps you to kind of control the board it comes down with stealth so it can't be countered you're always going to kind of get the jump on the tau i found that uh, i remember playing a game and, uh, against um a zephyr blade deck last season and warp spider was just annoying me for like six turns it just kept coming on and dealing with the unit and then bouncing back and i was like i couldn't i couldn't do anything about it so uh warp spider is actually very very effective it's only really weak to the um, carry on tactics and fuselade combo that Tau can do, but you know, they'll get that off once every now and again. But yeah, Warp Spider's in a very good place, definitely think you want to check that out. Uh, next up uh, is the Eldritch Storm. I think the Eldritch Storm is superb. This is one of the best AoEs in the game, and particularly against the Tau, because it hits twice, and that, that means that the first time can deal with things like shielded drones, it takes off the shield, and then the second one deals damage, or it can just basically wipe out the board, like whether it's drones or even slightly bigger units. So Eldritch Storm is a pretty clutch card against Tau. I would probably keep this in my in my opening mulligan if I was playing with the Eldari. What else do I think is pretty good for Eldar when we're thinking about fighting Tau? Let's have a look. Yeah, two more. So uh, th there's lots of good cards I've seen in the Eldar, but I think in particular, I really do think this is where the Dance of Death comes in. Now, the Dance of Death's always been a good card, but against the Tau, this is amazing because, again, it means that your Warlord can, without after you've spent the four energy, without then spending any more energy, Dance of Death can just constantly deal with... Um, the the enemy um well the enemy board was going to say but certainly the enemy flyers and right the enemy um drones so dance of death is a real nightmare if you get that down early against tau and last but not least i was going to suggest that the um where's it gone even though it's been nerfed the hemlock is still great because that blast three still takes out it still takes out drones very very powerful uh, easy to take out three units with the hemlock Ray fighter so i think uh yeah so there there's just a handful of units that i think make the eldar very effective against Tau. i think eldar uh, could do pretty good against Tau in a in a town meta to be honest so that leaves us with the Tau and the necrons okay so let's start with the necrons i think for necrons the key lord without doubt for me would be Imatech and that's just because um, obviously having access to Lord of the Storm means that you can immediately deal with those pesky drones right pinging for one plus the two damage from Imatech you can clear those off and not only that but you're also healing yourself every time you do so so Imatech's in a very good place funnily enough uh, Orican's okay too because Orican is usually the leader that you see with the uh, with the scarabs However, I have started to see Imatek Scarab builds, and Imatek Scarab builds might be the best anti tau build you can do right now with Necrons because you get the combo of Imatek um, being able to deal with the drones every single turn and uh, obviously having um, Scarabs. Scarabs are a real nightmare. Like, we, we literally tower have the Fusillade, and then once they deal, do that and they can get the board clear. You, if you're playing Scarabs well, you should always be able to recover from a board clear and rebuild the board quite quickly, and then now, then what? And Tau don't have tons and tons and tons of ways of dealing with it, so the, the the Scarab builds can be pretty effective right now. I've lost quite a few games with Tau to Scarabs, so I think Scarabs in general, I'm not going to go over every Scarab card, but I think the Scarab strategy can be pretty good, and it might be worth testing it with Imatech to, to, to really turn up the pressure on Tau. A few other cards worth mentioning against Tau, though, are... Uh, I think it's definitely worth considering the Ghost Immortal. The Ghost Immortal is pretty good, right? Because it's got the high, for three energy, it's got the high health, it's got the high range attack. Um, and interestingly, it's also got 
and key to it is also got regeneration two and remnant. So that means that if you don't kill me, I'm going to regenerate that health back to four. If you do kill me, I could get back up again. You've got to kill me again. So I actually think there's a lot of value packed into this. It's always been a pretty good card like on the fringe, but against a Tau meta, this is a very, very good early drop. Uh, yeah, definitely. Uh, now then, uh, again, Praetorian's always been good, but still good here. Again, with the four, four health, the Vanguard and three range attack standing up to the range attack. I think Praetorian's in a good place as ever. I think Doom players lost a little bit of impact against Tau. We talked about that earlier briefly, but anyway, we're not talking about that. We're talking about cards to use. Um, I definitely think that the Psychomancer is uh, pretty good because you can stun those long range enemies. So, you know, if you're coming up against long range units that we can't quite deal with just stunning it with this uh, and then bang yourself that turn to go and attack it or kill it before it can use its long range uh, it's pretty powerful and i also want to talk about solar pulse i think this is the time to play this card we talked about in the tyrannies didn't we the toxic miasma a little bit but this thing blinds all enemies like if they go wide and you play this like you just that's almost as good as a board clear against tau like what are they going to do? They don't have any melee attack on so many of these units. It's such a it's such a good. It almost feels like a far energy Will of Gork. Not quite, obviously. But it doesn't affect your own units where Will of Gork does. So there's some some kind of interesting tactics you can use with this thing. I kind of want to... I really want to test double solar pulse in a Necron build. I really... You know, that that's be without talking about the fact that it's a stratagem. So obviously it can, uh, it can be... Um, it can play uh, well with things like uh, Artifice, right? Triggering Artifice abilities. And speaking of Artifice, I think the pl the Plasmancer is very good here, right? This would be my Artifice of choice, probably. Uh, I also think the Hexmark Destroyer is good as ever as well. But this thing dealing three damage is just going to ping off drones like no one's business. So this is very, very good. Uh, are there any other Necron cards that I think are particularly good? I think Necrons do pretty well against Tau talked about the solar pulse oh the only other one i was going to mention is just of course the sky of assault so again we talked about the go wide strategy so you want to be running this so see what you can do guys with those cards pull something together that's a little bit more into tower i think you can definitely fight the tower pretty well you've also got high health on him so you can go more into the late game and i think tau are um could potentially struggle with with some imitech builds so last but not least we're going to talk about the mirror match what do you do if you're playing tau and you're playing against tau Right, so the big thing here is, uh, we'll, we'll do the obvious one. The obvious thing is the Kalyon Tactics, and combining that with the 4 energy, um, where's it gone? The 4 energy Fusillade, basically, the Relentless Fusillade. So this deals 2 damage to all enemies, but if you play the Kalyon Tactics, you've Mark Light at all enemies by 2, except for the Warlord. And that means that this thing ends up doing basically four damage to the entire board. So it's a great AoE. It clears all the drones. It's super, super powerful. So that's the obvious thing. Um, in a, in a, if you're playing against a lot of Tau, you probably want to have two of each of those. Now, um, the other way that you can... When you're playing against Tau, you can also um, think about kind of like outvaluing them. So things like my recent... If you go and watch my recent... Uh, Optimus Drones deck, where I try to optimize the Drones decks. Uh, I, I ran this card. Now, the Experimental Drones is quite a slow card. It's not right in every Tau deck, but if you're playing against Tau, if you get to basically play this before they do, or maybe you play this, they don't even run it, which is definitely going to be the case with a lot of Tau builds, then you're kind of going to win the long game, right? Like Because every time you play a drone, you're doubling the value of that drone, and your opponent's having to double the resources into getting rid of it. So... This is a very good, well, it's a very good deck for any long game, but particularly in the Tau Mirror. Experimental Drones could be a real key card. Uh, another, uh, we didn't talk about the Warlords, but I do think that in the Mirror, in particular, Shadow Sun is, uh, really shines, because Shadow Sun, obviously giving himself three range attack, means he can just deal with drones very cheaply, very efficiently. You know, you your opponent plays two energy for a drone, you pay one energy to clear that drone. So... Uh, particularly in the early game, Shadow Sun is like insanely good at uh, at dealing with that. It can also access Markalite very easily. So if they try to go a bit taller, Shadow Sun's um, you know more effective at taking things down, and he has more health to start with. So Shadow Sun's pretty good in the mirror match. 
Uh, another humble unit to talk about, which is pretty good in the mirror, is the gun drone. Why? Well, if my opponent plays gun drone, turn one, I am very loath to suddenly put, drop a stealth drone turn one, right? With the, with the two energy, the gun drone can like take that out. On top of that, the gun drone, obviously, that two ping can just help uh, hit an enemy um, drone, which means that it's now one health instead of three health, which means that the Lola can now clear it. So gun drones are, again, very, very effective. They also hit things that are in stealth as well. Which a lot of uh, a lot of other tower units are, so you can weaken them before they come down. I think gun drone's pretty good in the mirror. Um, what else do I think with the tower? Uh, now, depending on the type of tower build that you're running, if you were going down the kind of battle suit mode, again, go see my Shadow Sun battle suits and my own Var battle suits deck guide um, in my videos. But uh, what you'd see in there is that I kind of really try to uh, maximize the efficiency around the dynamic offensive. And what that means is that I'm, every time I play this card, I'm more or less drawing something that can flank. I'm either drawing a Vespid, a Long Strike, or one of Battle Suits, and the Battle Suits all then get flanked because of the ability here. So uh, one of the things that you, um, you can do in the mirror match is you can kind of use this to basically ensure that your long range units are more effective than your opposing Tau uh, long range units, right? Because yours are coming on with flank and therefore actually getting to use that long range. So this is really, really good in the uh, in the mirror match. Now then, yeah, a couple more. So another one that is actually very good in the mirror match is the Crisis Bodyguard. Now the Crisis Bodyguards, it's, it struggles a bit in matches like against Swarm Lord or particularly Chaos. Like and this is almost a bad card against Chaos, but in the Tau matchup, it's brilliant. Why? Because Tau, most of Tau's units are attacking with range damage, and of course, because you've got the high, super high, five range damage for only four energy, uh, and having the shield as well, it's a real bit. It's a real wall for the Tau to get through. So the Crisis Bodyguard in the mirror match is absolutely superb. Highly recommend two of them. Um, we've already mentioned stuff. I'm not going to go through every stealth unit. You've obviously got the battle suits and you've got things like stealth chassis if you want access to more stealth drones. Stealth is just very, very good in the mirror. Again, uh, for the same reason that we said Tyranid stealth is good against Tau, like obviously thinking about uh, you being the one to get the drop on your opponent, maximizing stealth is very, very good. Um, and um, the last thing to talk about was Long Strike himself. Now, Long Strike's just, you know, one of the best legendaries in the game, full stop period but is really good in the tower mirror uh, because uh, again having flank and long range is just insane and obviously in the tower mirror you might have board states where your opponent has a unit down with long range so you getting the jump and hitting his long range thing first with long strike is fantastic uh, also long strike counters your enemy long strike for that exact reason so if you if, if you can bait their long strike out and then counter it with your long strike that gives you board dominance uh, as well so uh, long strike is superb in the mirror match so there you got it guys i know that was a bit of a long video but hopefully that helped i wanted to just bring you some kind of tips and, and strategies really just adapt your decks a little bit you know if you are struggling with town you want to beat them specifically the, most of the factions do have tools to do that hopefully this video has illustrated that so if you like the video please like let me know in the comments if there's any other uh, strategies that you think i've missed or didn't talk about or any of the ones that i did talk about that made you think oh yeah cool i'm gonna go and try that let me know in the comments always like the interaction thanks for all the support subscribe to the channel if you haven't done so yet and i'll see you in the next one